I you like, heard I like, it here first. Hey, I like where this is going. <laughs> Maybe somebody might So want. hospitable. Yeah, I'll have some apples. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Damn, I do feel like I'm at my mom's crib. <laughs> Almost is, house, man. This is, this is a truly Asian podcast. <laughs> I fuck with it. <laughs> okay, we are here with Ted Park, American rapper, singer, musician overall, YouTuber even. Uh, oh. And yeah, we're about to go <laughs> under the influence, find out what he's into, how he started his rap career, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, appreciate cheers. y'all having me. Welcome. All right, we also don't have to cheers every time because then it would just get kind of crazy. You know, <laughs> it's so, all good. Getting acquainted. All right, so I mean, you wanted to do it today because you just dropped a new single, and we were just yes, uh, admiring that you did over forty thousand views in like oh, a man, day. Oh right? man, I appreciate y'all. Shouts to all the fans. Like, you know what it is like for me. I'm still a growing artist, mm -hmm. but I'm super grateful. I have such a loyal base already. Mm. Plus, you know. Everyone who's involved in helping push this record, so I'm super excited. I'm glad y'all like it too. Well, I didn't even ask y'all if y'all liked it. No, but uh, love it. oh, we love oh, it. I appreciate that. Thank I you so it much, like six bro. Six times after I yeah, heard it on big that, love. On that, I appreciate yeah. that, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Shout out to my boy Zanse over there. You know, super producer, produced the hit. I got my boy Richard over there. Richard song that did the video. You know, we ganged up. Hey, real quick though, I also noticed the jewelry. Show the watch and the necklace. Who's ever seen a bust down G Shock before? Yeah. <laughs> I have never. I have truly never seen yeah, a bust down G Shock. Hold, hold, it's hold funny up. because. My jeweler was like, listen, bro, this is going to retain no value, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a rapper, not an investor, you know? <laughs> so we turned a $30 watch to a $3,500 watch, but it's all good. Shout out to my partner, Big Saho, for telling me to do that. <laughs> Started the wave and then, uh, you know, got the plug chain because plugged in family, you know, and then finally put my name on the chain, Ted Park. So when people ask me what my name is. Come on, bro. Is that also like your logo? <laughs> yeah. My, my boy, Casey. Oh, that one goes he, he hard, did it. Yeah, Hell yeah. It's clean. Yeah. Yeah, Vivi no CZ, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, rappers are literally like, I guess, the anti-investor. Like, they're oh, yeah, for physically sure. responsible. And it's yeah. funny because like, as an artist who's brewing, but not like super big, uh -huh. like, you know, I'll, let's be honest. Like, my career is not built on flexing, so I can say this. Sometimes the paper is up. Sometimes it's down. But every time it's down, all my like... Finance homies be like, bro, you got like fifteen thousand dollars in like chains, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're right. Let's do some more shows. <laughs> Shit. Do, do the chains go up in value though, or Hell like? Nah, diamonds. <laughs> but it's not about the values. If they dance, bro. If I ever go on, so you think you can dance? I'm just gonna be like, look, man. <laughs> I can't, but the VVs do, you know? Yeah, that's a fucking bar. <laughs> we oh, yeah. always rapping. No what? cap in this rap. Wait, I got a question, though. If they, have, if they have no value, how much have you probably spent in jewelry, would you say? I mean, you know, I'm a relatively new jewelry person because I had zero money to my name before 2018. So I say, like, maybe 30 grand. 30 Ooh. grand's a lot of money. You could yeah, do a lot of 30 grand. You could buy a car. All my youngs, don't tell me, man. <laughs> I don't even know how to drive. <laughs> you don't know how to drive? Life priorities. But you know, New York, you know the vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You said, we were just talking about this earlier, but for the camera, you're from a, you're from 201? Bro, I was just in Cliffside Park. Shouts to all my homies in Bergen County, by the way. You're... That's fuck. I'm from Fort Lee. Oh, Fort Lee. <laughs> yeah, that, I live right yeah. fucking there. That's crazy. You know crazy. the vibes. That's yeah. not New York, just for any, just to clarify. Oh, yeah. It's well, close enough. Yeah. It's I was close living enough. In, I was living in New York, and then, you know, COVID hit, and I'd never, I've never lived in a house my whole life. I grew up in an apartment family, you know? I was living in lesser than apartments while I was coming up in New York, and then, you know, two of my big homies, for real, like, who really took care of me when I was down, they were like, hey, we're looking for a third roommate. My lease ended. I was like, Jersey it is. So, yeah, it was dope, though. Cliffside, Pal Park, Fort Lee, you already know. A lot more room, right? Like oh, hella room, and I could actually record. Exactly. That's pretty what much, I'm saying. Pretty much, they did some real bro shit, and they let me take... I set the studio up in the basement, mm. and AKA, we was all down there macking out, chilling. Mm -hmm. It was cool as hell. I've never had that much space in my life, so it was dope. Were, were your other two roommates also, like, uh, musicians or creators or anything like that? Uh, one of them, actually, um, he's currently at Live Nation on the business side. So really, it was like, hey, Ted, this is how taxes work. This is how finances work. I'm like, shit, I want to get paid cash. You just stop spending $10,000 yeah, on chains. Yeah, yeah. He's like, Ted, bro, you need to put this percent. But, you know, and my other boys, actually, he was at Lady M, but now he's pursuing acting. Really? Yeah, my boy Pops, a.k.a. Bud, Tr Bud Tremblay. But, uh, yeah, it's... um. 
I mean, those are just like two people that really help hold me down, held me down. Yeah, let's quickly talk about the early life, right? Like, so when did you yeah. start writing raps? What were you like growing up? Uh, what was it like living in New York? <sighs> let's start with the first question, though. All right. When did you start writing raps? I was like 13 in Korea. So the be- so here's what happened. Um, I moved to Korea when I was like 13 years old because my dad wanted to go start a business over there. Were you born here then? Yeah, I was born in Wisconsin. Okay, word. And pretty much the news was sprung on me two weeks before we moved. And I could speak no Korean. And I, my dad's like, we're moving to Korea. It's excited and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> my parents are like, never heard me swear. I went crazy on their ass, bro. Moved to Korea, culture shock, you know. I was in an all boys Korean school. I was just being a bad kid. But not like bad, just, you know, confused. Mm-hmm. And then um, I started rapping. <laughs> On my dad's laptop when he wasn't home. Because I, I stopped going to school. Like I, I was like, I, I can't go to school no more. So I just started rapping on his laptop on like free software. No microphone. Terrible, but <laughs> you got to start from somewhere. And who was, and who was kind of like the, the people that you liked back then where you, that you were trying to emulate? And like, actually, I'm, I was more into singers and rappers. So like Akon, T-Pain. Yes. My, those are two of my heroes. But yeah, I was just jumping on industry beats cause, and dropping it on MySpace. And I was actually, I found out that if you refresh the page, you can keep click, clicking your song, the plays go up. So for marketing, I would just keep refreshing it. 30,000 <laughs> plays, what you know about that? All manually done. Like you manually People, y'all see you doing numbers. I'm like, shit, I'm grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just did digital marketing, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, if you don't have a career in rap, you should get in marketing for sure. Okay, so you live in Korea and that's when you kind of started to rap. Yeah. Now, when did you come back to uh, America? Oh, I was in Korea for a year and a couple months. So I came back for high school, 14. And um, all my friends, I used to play ball and sports. I've been this tall since I was like, Six, sixth grade, right? So you so, were you were a, you were a, you were you were a problem on the court in sixth grade, and then you, uh, didn't, you stopped growing. I was okay. <laughs> the problem was I didn't run the offense, you know. So I guess you could say that. But I came back. Everyone's like, "Yo, football practice, you'll pull up." I'm like, "Nah, I'm rapping now." <laughs> Everyone was like, "Hell no!" Nah. And you really dedicated your time to rapping like that, dude. I've I made a song every day since I was 12 years old. Holy Boy, shit! Or 13, whatever. Yeah. Wait, I'm I'm curious about moving to Korea because I had a similar situation. You moved there without speaking any Korean. You had to go to school. Yeah. So how, what was that like? Like you went to an English school? Um, I was kind of like a novelty. Dude, I went to a Korean school, all boys school with a uniform, all that. I was like rebellious. So like, you know, they have strict dress code. I like tapered the pants, like got a fade, like had long <laughs> hair. Was like, I was just tripping, you know what I'm saying? But I was just unhappy and trying to find myself and, you know, f- difficult things in the family. And um, music was like my escape from reality. And I would like perform in the mirror. No, I, I couldn't really rap. You know, my lyrics were not good. Mm-hmm. And I had no equipment. So I would just, I downloaded Audacity. I don't know if y'all know what yep, that yep, is. Yep, yep. No mic, just recording through the computer and then throwing some EQ on there. And I'm like, yo, this shit hard. <laughs> I told myself that, that was, I would listen to it and I was so blind to it. I was like, yo, this is professional studio quality. You know? That's the type of delusion you need. Like, oh, I yeah. feel like everyone who becomes an artist or entertainer is a little crazy, bro. Yeah. 100%. And they're delusional in the beginning. Like, everyone's telling them, like, oh, you're never going to make it. Like, this shit sucks. Oh, blah, yeah. Blah, blah. Oh, everyone. And my yeah. homies would say it in the nicest way. Like, yo, you know, it's really hard to be hard. <laughs> I'm like, what you know about that? And what do, they, what do they say now? I'm curious. Man, just like, bro, like, yo, so, bro, this new song, crazy. Always, always believed. But you know what it is, though? <laughs> but, but you know what it is? There's definitely people, 99% of people that were like, yo, crazy to see you doing big things. Congrats. But the, my really close friends that I still am tapped in with to this day, they might have n- not believed, but they never hated. Mm. And when everyone else was hating, they were like, nah, bro, it's my boy. Always j- stamped me. Mm. Always showed me mad love. Never judged. So, you know. I have one more question about the Korean thing. Moving there, what was like the biggest culture shock like uh, scenario? Seeing, seeing Korean people, I'm from fucking Wisconsin, bro. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, everybody look like me. Yeah, but then I'm like, not we special were, no more. But bro, we was hooping. I was busting my whole school's ass, bro. <laughs> <laughs> With some American ball handling. And then I was like, yo, son, maybe I can go to KBL. <laughs> Hell nah. <laughs> One time the fucking, I, I, got into, I got into a fight with the kid I was sitting next to. This kid gets up in the middle of class and just starts swinging on me. So now I'm in the <laughs> middle of class, seven years old, and I'm just fighting this kid. I'm, I'm beating his ass, right? I'm winning. His boys stand up, two of them, and they just start kicking the shit out of me. Like I got jumped in the middle of the classroom in second grade. Bro, I kid, I kid you not, Korean school, the second the teacher leaves the room to transition, all the fight's going down. Oh. 
Bro, but what's funny is the teacher comes in in the middle of me getting my ass kicked and just starts teaching. And the kids don't even stop. They were just <laughs> yeah. stomping me out like while the teacher is in there. Damn, and it be your own people. Literally, I'm like, man, I want to go back to the white people, man. They, were, they wasn't doing this shit to me. That's super For real. Funny. So, dude, you were recording a song a day. When did you start feeling like you had like a, a sound or, or what, what was the first thing where you're like, whoa, this is actually real progress in my Can career? Can I be honest with you? Yeah. Uh, there's two parts of that question. The first time that I was like, wow, this can actually happen for me was 2017. How, when, old, were, how old were you then? 23. Wow. So you were recording a song a day for 13 and only 10 years later, you finally thought the first yeah, time. Yeah, I went happened. viral on Spotify. I ended up on Fresh Finds playlist and I went from under a thousand plays to 100K in like two days. And what then, song? Uh, Hello, Who Is This? And then every label, like I had every label in my email within 24 hours. And um, that was the first time I'm like, oh shit. And people are like messaging me on Facebook, like, bro, you're on this playlist. You're, you're, I, I charted on Spotify on the viral chart as an independent. And then, um, that was the first time, but to be honest, I feel like I finally found my sound like since moving here. Really? Yeah. Okay. Wait, so I'm, you, you're dropping a song a day. What's like the fastest time you've made a song in? Uh, well now I freestyle everything. So, um, I've made a song in like five, 10 minutes. Damn. Jesus. Yeah. That's like, that's like just twice as long as that song's actually going to be. That's yeah. fucking crazy. And it's crazy because like, it's because I'm finally kind of comfortable in my skin and telling my story. And I was always very self-conscious about my music, but you got to be the biggest, your biggest critic. Mm -hmm. And that's why like a lot of my friends, I'm hard on them too, but they appreciate me because I'm harder on myself. Why, why were you sensitive about it? Was it being Asian and trying to make hip hop rap music? Being or Asian and trying to make hip hop music, like not being Asian enough for Asian people, being Asian and black, white, whoever, like being like, oh, he's just an Asian dude. But I realized like music's been the biggest thing for me in my life. It changed my life because now there's people of all races, all cultures that respect me for my art and the story I'm trying to tell. You know what I mean? And, and so on that topic, it was like, uh, well, actually, before we get into that topic, let's tell the, like, who is Saho? <laughs> Look, everyone has, like, that, that brother, right? Saho, honestly, like, this dude, I tell everyone this. I would not be where I am today, not even in my career, but probably alive if I didn't meet this guy. When I was in New York, um, I was struggling. I had no paper. And to be very transparent, um, when I, I dropped out of high school, this label, like, okay, I can't, I can't really dive too much into this, but they were like, yo, we're going to change your life, change your career. Didn't work out. I was stuck in Charlotte, North Carolina, living out of a Super 8 motel. My mom was in Madison worrying about me. One day it calls me. I'm at the bus stop. Pick me up in Charlotte. Me and my mom were living at a hotel for like a month. We took a Greyhound to New York. We were living out of like, hotels, hotel lobbies, basements. And um, my mom eventually went back to Korea. And then, um, dude, I was thugging it out, sleeping like in lobbies, like sometimes like just going back and forth on the train, you know? And then I, was, I went to a hotel party because I did have one friend in New York that I met through my boy Sketch. His name's Mike. And how old are you at this time? Um, I'm like 22 years old, maybe, okay. maybe 21. And um, I go to a hotel party. I'm walking out. I'm about to leave. And I, don't, I actually don't know where I'm going because I kind of don't have nowhere to go. And this dude, Saho, this tall black dude, supremed out. Yo, son, I like your jacket. Where you going? We going upstairs. I'm like, all right. We vibed out. And this is the first time I've really seen people pulling out thousands of dollars, cash, dripped out. I'm like, oh, shit. And like, I don't talk. I don't show off, bro. And my other boy's a rapper. He's like freestyle. And they're like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I make music. I started playing some of it. And they're like, oh, this is, he's like, oh, this is dope. And Saho took me outside to the balcony. He's like, yo, you see that Beamer right there? That's my Beamer. And he was telling me about what he does. And he really, his passion was, he's like, I'm not no artist, but I love music. And I want to manage an artist. I want to manage you. I'm like, oh shit, whatever, bro. You know, like, appreciate mm -hmm. it. He actually followed up with me and we went to Cafeteria in New York. I don't know if you know that restaurant. A really nice uh, place and took me out. This dude popped five bottles of Don P, paid for all his friends. You know what I'm saying? How many people were at the dinner for five bottles of Dom? Bro, Less than 10. Damn. But he, he took his own money, put me in a professional studio for the first time. Um, I know where to live. He was like, hey, I got a situation for you. It's not ideal, but if you're willing to do it. So 
put me in projects in Harlem on 116th and 5th. And before that, I was living in Canarsie at my boy Matt and Mark's house. And if you don't know what Canarsie is, Flossie, et cetera, Pop Smoke's Hood, whatever. Not the safest places, but I had the right people who were certified were from these places being like, hey, this is our artist where this is our homie. He's, a, he, he's just trying to make music, like, leave him alone. But people really embraced me, showed me a lot of love. And, um, you know, I had no money to, in my pocket. Saho and my other boys would, like, buy me food, make sure I had a plate, um, make sure I had a, a roof over my head, even if it's, like, three, four of us sharing a couch, whatever. And um, really, like, got me through, like, the hardest time in my life, for sure. So my question would be, like, for so... You guys decide to make music, to, or he decides to support your career, yeah. right? What's the plan, right? There's like, no plan. We're just going to the studio every day. <laughs> yeah. What do you record? Do you record at home on a $200 like Acer laptop from the pawn shop? Fuck it. We go into the nicest studios in Manhattan. So I go from recording on an Acer laptop on FL Studio to recording at Platinum Sound Studio, which is $150 an hour. And, and who's, where are you getting beats from? Who's your first producer? How are you? Well, luckily... Um, DJ Payne One is actually a multi-platinum producer from my hometown. It's kind of like my big brother. And he was sending me beats. And we're pulling beats off YouTube, meeting people at clubs and bars in Lower East Side. Mm. Oh, I make beats. Oh, come to the studio. You can meet, it's like one out of five people you meet in the oh, Lower East Side. Oh, one out of five people. Yeah, man, I make beats. Yeah, I got my laptop on me. Oh, no studio right there. Like, it was <laughs> super grassroots. We literally built it from the ground up. No knowledge. So then what was, okay, now you said your first big break was at 22, the viral. Yeah, 2017. Okay, and so that song um, you guys had worked on together and whatnot and label conversations, like what, 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 we, what happened in that moment, right? We signed a, a deal with a major label division in France because I was like, yo, we're going to get this European bag and we're still independent in the States. We did get a bag and we actually did not, read the contract properly with the lawyer. So it was only half of what we thought it was. <laughs> so we thought there was another half coming. So we went to the Rolly star, <laughs> got chains, uh, did some other things, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, like, but the, we learned so much because this was the first time I was like, oh, I made it. They're about to blow me up. I got shelved for 11 months. Damn. Damn. Uh, so this record is moving. It's at 200K streams in under a month. They were like, we want to re-release it, rebrand it. So they pulled it off spot streaming. I lost all my momentum. Damn. <clears throat> Wait, what? what's the name of this label? <laughs> NDA. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, nah, no, like, but, 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 but there's no beef. Like, I mean, if they've blown up artists, you know what I'm saying? Um, biggest blessing in disguise because I got to be humbled. And then I decided to never put my career in someone else's hands again. And then we started dropping a song every week, Ted Park Tuesdays, <clears throat> SoundCloud, whatever. And then top of 2018, I put out a song of, and a video on Elevator called Me Love. And I went to sleep. It had like 2,000 views. I woke up. My text, yo, go to Twitter, go to Twitter. <laughs> and it, it went viral on Twitter. And then I caught some traction from that. Started doing local shows in New York for like, you know, 100 cap, 50 cap. Just networking, going yeah. out every night, getting my buzz up. And then eventually uh, Jay Park found that video and DM me on Instagram. Oh, yeah. shit. So he reached out to you. <clears throat> yeah. He's like, yo, you fire, keep working. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know much about Korean music, but I know you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Hey, that's a go-to guy for Koreans who don't know Korean music. Oh, for sure. Like. Uh, for a reason, though. Well, it, okay. So he DMs you. You have, you have songs with him. You've been on tour. So how did you build that relationship? So there's pl probably artists out there that get hit up. How did you cultivate that relationship? What happened to make is, it, yeah. <clears throat> ironically, he was coming to America for the Rock Nation brunch when I was actually going to Korea for the first time as an artist. Uh, Cut Studio, really respected. Those are like my youngs. They flew me out. They believed in me. They wanted to shoot some videos with me in Korea, give me some features. And Jay was coming as I was as I was dipping. But then I had three days left in Korea. This dude touches down. He goes to an America's or Asia's Got Talent dinner, and it says, "Where you at?" I pull up to AOMG studio and um, I'm playing my records and he's like, Hey man, like, I don't know your situation, but like, I want to sign you. Damn right there. Yeah. And that I was, was your first time meeting him. Yeah. I was like, Oh shit. And I, you know, me and Saho, like we've done this from the ground up. So at first I was like, damn, like I got, and I had already gone through a deal, which didn't work out. So I was like, I don't know if I want to do this, but 
he showed me a lot of love and a lot of patience and was like, Hey, I don't know if this is a step, a stepping stone or whatever, but I guarantee you, like, I think my platform's going to help you. And the thing is that when I had gone viral, et cetera, I did not have Asian fans. Asian people didn't know who I was yet. And I was like, I need to get Korean people behind me. So I decided to do it. And then in Austin, Texas at the South by Southwest festival, uh, higher music had their stage and he chained me. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Wait, so you signed it. AOMG? I was with Hire from 2018 to 2020. I want to know about this, this term, chaining. So it's like, a, it's like a knighting, but with a chain to a yeah, rapper. Yeah, I mean, it's like every rapper's dream, right? Getting the chain put on you, oh shit, you know? And uh, Did you yeah. do like a knight, you like hit the one knee and you were like bowing your head and shit? Well, or like- I actually had braids, so the chain almost didn't get around my head. Uh-huh. And while he's doing it, I'm like, oh, fuck, it's going to break. <laughs> <laughs> it was stuck like mid mid head. Wait, which braids was this? The long ass the long, braids? Bro, okay. It's stuck. And I'm like, fuck, this is embarrassing. But it made it, it made it over. <laughs> and um, yeah, from then on, you know, be- even before I signed the J, um, I had some other people interested and uh Dumbfounded and his team were gracious enough to let me open on his tour. And then so things happened relatively fast after that. Then I did the higher music tour and then K-Town Night Market, Danny Park, who's my big brother now. They booked me my first festival. Um, so, you know, I just started doing shows, started doing music, collabing, and that's when my career, like, officially started. You have such an interesting story of growing up in the projects, sleeping on trains and lobbies. <laughs> and what, how come yeah. you've never really expressed that in any of your videos and things like that? Because I do believe that that is the number one medium for somebody to yeah, get a story through a Because, like, video. I was like, no one's going to believe this. <clears throat> but even it's like, the truth, even right? like in, when I was in Wisconsin, bro, I was in like a, me and my mom were in a very humble situation, small apartment growing up, you know, but I wasn't in the super hood, you know, cause my, my mom and dad always made sure, even though my dad was overseas, let's keep him away from that. You know what I'm saying? But then like at the end of the day though, when I was in high school, a lot of the white people were hating on me and like a lot of the black folks were really fucking with me. So I started, <laughs> I started taking the bus to the South side, chilling, doing this, going to little home studios and they really embraced me. And then like when I went to New York, you know, I had to do what I had to do. That was the best situation that they could do for me to stay in New York and pursue my dream. So I was like, fuck it. It's either I'm gonna go to the projects and be in the hood or I'm gonna go back to Madison and like work at like Walgreens or something. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's respectable. That's respectable. Everyone got to work hard, make a living. But I was like, I can't give up like mm. that. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go all out. But that's why even like I was very conscious about showing my story and I'm um, just showing like what I've been through because I was like, no one's going to believe it. But now I just don't care. Loki, I feel like that train, like riding the train back and forth would be a fire scene in like a music video. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, you know, I got to take all the drip and the chains off right now because <laughs> shit's crazy out there. But, you know, but that's what I mean. Like, that's why this year the music's a little more personal. Um, I'm still going to put out fun stuff just like the new single mm-hmm. yeah, but I'm excited to really show people where I'm really talking my shit and like really speaking my facts you know Word. but let's talk about that <laughs> yeah I want to so, go, okay, okay, so go deeper you grinded, on that. you grinded you were poor you grinded your ass off and yeah. now you go on tour what is the woman's situation what is the party situation what well, is the tour life like 2018 first time tour and I'm like I'm trying to go crazy have a good time now as an artist where people respect me I want to give the best show possible and I want to show people a great performance, not performing over my tracks, not being drunk on stage, wilding out. I want to really show people I'm a true entertainer and I have really real talent. So now my mentality is like, this is actually for my release party next week. I'm actually fucking rehearsing for this show every Damn. day next week. Yeah. Are you drinking so, at your own release party? After I'm done. Uh, <laughs> That's why I'm performing at 12. So hey. by 1240, let's go. <laughs> but like, if I, if I get drunk at the club, I'm not going to karaoke after. Because being drunk and singing kills your voice. Whoa. Whoa. Why? Because alcohol dries your vocal cords out and then singing is like stressing oh, them out. Yeah. And you're in a karaoke. This is not a studio. There's no EQ compression, crazy ass effects on your voice to enhance it so you can really hear it. You're drunk as hell screaming in that mic. Don't get me wrong. I'll go to the karaoke. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not singing. You know what I'm saying? You're, uh, that and I bet makes, people are always trying to get yeah, you to, right? Like, uh, I mean, but you know, for my big youngs, I'm like, shit, I. <laughs> I'll do a little song, you know? Yeah, yeah, you hey, know. What's your number one karaoke song? Let Me Love You, Mario. Oh, mm. that's a good one. Yeah, my, And then Fucking Problems. <laughs> yes! Two Chains, Drake, my favorite Kendrick. One. <laughs> 
But yeah, I can't really sing, so that's why I got to choose fucking problems. But like, yeah, if, <laughs> if I could sing, it would definitely be like, let me love you. Maybe ignition, something, oh. so, something sexy. But if I do it, it's like all the bitches want to leave. So <laughs> that's why I don't do it. Uh, one of the stories, so I'm just thinking back on the tour stuff. When you were back on tour, what was the, uh, tell, us, tell us the Louis Uzi verse story. What was <laughs> okay. it like? I dropped the album 2019. Like, well, not an album, like a full EP with Hire. And I did a single release party at MK Karaoke. Oh. You know that place fits like 100 people? I sold 200 tickets. Bro, that place barely fits 100 so people. So I almost actually got shut down by the fire department because Holy my shit. line, my line of fans, events started at 7. They were lining up from 2 p.m. in front of all the businesses on the Wait, block. Wait, did you, did you perform with a guy named Clubby? or, or Oh, that's like my that? boy. He's actually in L.A. right now. Really? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a nice kid. Yeah. I, I fuck with him. Shout out to Clubby U. For sure, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's crazy. But um, yeah, we were at Terra last night. <laughs> blacked out <laughs> but um yeah so we finished my show and you know i'm the type of guy like and this will always be a part of my business model if the promoter wants to charge for meet and greets cool and the fans want to support but i, I take a picture after the show with all, all the fans i'll stand outside for 30 minutes an hour whatever you know and i was taking a picture with my fans no one left Lil uzi happened to be in k-town walked by and walked into that um building because um you know food gallery or whatever and then Instead of my fans being like, oh shit, Lil Uzi, they were screaming at me, you gotta fuck with Ted Park, do a song with Ted. And the security's like, oh shit. But Uzi came up to me like, damn, I really see you got something going. These, these people here for you? Puts his phone up, like, t t t talk your shit. He's like, what's your IG? Tags me on the story. And I was like, oh shit. Did that result in mad followers? I went up 10K in like 30 minutes. Damn. Yeah, but um, you know, he asked me, he told me, he's like, hey, let me, anything you, you need, brother, let me know now. <laughs> And everyone's like, yo, do the song, go to the studio with him. But I was like, I'm not ready. Which I regret. Because I have more confidence now. Now I'd be like, oh, we outside. Let's go, let's go do but it. Do you, you don't think you were ready back then? Or like Yeah, I mean, I was like, damn, like I don't want a big artist who I look up to to define my career. Mm. But um it was it was definitely a very inspiring moment for me. Is this oh. post uh, hands in the air with Jay Park? That song? Yeah, yeah, this is about a year after that. Okay, word. Yeah, but hold up. So you just said, I don't want a big artist to define my career, but I would say the entire rap industry is built off that. Oh, right? no, it is. But I've always been, you know what it is? The thing about the rap industry is there's also artists that have hella features with bigger artists and they get hella numbers, but it's hard for them to build their own fans. Mm. So I, I've kind of just wanted to pave my own way. Hmm. It's kind of like a, but but at the end of the day, that would have been a cosign that would have I know. Yeah, it wouldn't but, have taken away but from you. We, we never know. We, we, we're, we're never going to know because I never asked him for the favor or whatever I wanted to do. Does he follow you? Like, do you have a way to reach out to him? No, but every time I message him, every now and then he'll respond. Really? Yeah. That's oh, cool. Shit. He remembers And you. it's funny because my boy Nestle told me, actually, he's like, Uzi's the type of guy, like, if like, he sees you again, he's going to fuck with you. Don't get me wrong. I don't be blowing him up. Yeah. But like, I congratulated him, him on his album release because the album's incredible. Yeah. You know, and then he was like, you know, Love, you know, so that was cool. Which album? Which album was that? Um, Eternal to Take. Oh, okay. So, do do you ever have it though, where it's like I'm gonna have the right song for him, and then I'm gonna kind of maybe go for I it? I feel like when my following is up there and I build my wave, I'll reach out. What What would that be? Number of followers in your mind, <laughs> bro? I gotta at least be doing three thousand seater venues. That's achievable. I That's what see. I'm saying, though. I, yeah. I think I can get there. What yeah. is a 3,000 seater venue that like uh, uh, like the average uh, person would know? Terminal Your, five. Terminal five. Ah, Terminal yeah. five. T five, baby. T five. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know that one. And T five is like I would say T five is like for an, a normal artist trajectory. If they're doing an album every year and they're hot, it's probably like takes you about three years. Would you say? Yeah. Four I, years. Yeah, and you know, for me, since 2018. Like, it's been four years, but it was four years of me just kind of exploring and trying to figure it out. This is the first year where I feel like we finally put stuff together on the business end and my mental is ready to go. So I think this year we're going to see some big gains. How many, so before pandemic, well, actually, I, I'd be curious. So before pandemic, like, and, and your career was like on the up and up, what was <laughs> the most number of hard tickets that you've sold? Um, like five, six hundred. That's crazy. That's, yeah, that's really, really good. solid. Yeah, considering I don't even have 100K followers yet. Do you make more from sales, like like ticket sales like that, or streaming on Spotify and everywhere else put together? Um, Actually, shows are really good for me because my fans come out. Word. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, streaming, I do pretty good, finally. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, man, I'm able to like live, live in LA now and like eat nice food and treat my friends and have a good time. So, and also like people don't know this, but so I do have two companies backing me now and showing support, but I'm putting all the money up, wow. you know? So I'm still independent. And like, I, I really believe that I'm at a place where I still have room to grow before like a really big label where it ever takes over. So I'm going to put all my money in. Hey, bet on yourself all um, day long. If you don't bet on yourself, then you're in the wrong industry. Hey, but real quick, so what are your what are your revenue streams? And you could be like streaming, touring, like just yeah. What are your yeah, revenue streaming, streams? Streaming, shows, brands, features with other artists, like appearances, and now songwriting. Something I just got into. Really? Okay. Yeah. So you know, and of course, I'm still building revenue streams, but my biggest goal is that I can pop off in the next year or two. I can do this till I'm like. 32 ish, like five years. And, and then I can pass the torch down and officially focus on cultivating and bringing up new talent. Mm. I want to start a label. Who are some up and coming artists that you're looking at right now where you're like, <laughs> they're next? Well, I'm not going to say up and coming, but I'm going to shout out some of my boys, you know, Justin Parks, my brother. Mm-hmm. I've really tapped in with him since I came out here and I have a lot of respect for him. Um, there's this kid in Koreatown, New York, AK to the face. He's hard. Oh, I know Check him. him out. Go fuck with one mob. Those are my boys. <laughs> he's hard. He's really hard. Uh, clubby's on the up and up, you know, um, there's this kid, Jay Fontaine. He's like 17, really talented. Um, heartbreaker. He's hard. I just did some shit with him. He's Laos. I feel like Asian artists, there's a wave, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's culturally, like they don't collab, cross over. I want to collaborate with all the Asian artists. Smart. You mean I, that I, they I did, like- I did, art, I did a song with, with a Hmong artist, Kid Swami, David Yang. Wow. Dude, I don't give a fuck. Like, Korean artists, like, it's like they kind of stick in that bubble. With Koreans. I, I'm trying to fuck with everyone. We That's- talking about Asian, all this, like, if you dope and you Asian, like for real, and by dope, I don't mean just the music. I see you hustling and building a name for yourself too. Because the music is one thing. You have to have a lot of determination to really start building something. I'll fuck with you, bro. That's really smart. You don't even got to speak the same language. I did a song with this Indonesian girl, ramen girl. She's hard. And she has, she's actually the first, okay, if I'm wrong, my bad, but I think Warner signed her and they started like a division over in there. And she's like the first artist, flagship artist. So, you know, that's but, dope. Yeah. Wait, so that was, that leads into my question. What is it like your top three dream collabs, let's say with Asian artists? Hmm. You know, Jay was one of them. Mm-hmm. Dumb was one of them. I got both of them. Mm-hmm. Damn. Mm-hmm. Damn. Just out here achieving your dreams. Um, That's crazy. Honestly, like there's a lot of Asian talent. So dude, honestly, like I can't name three, but like, I want to fuck with everyone. Like, if you fire and we can meet, I like to collab in the studio together and we can relate on a personal level and the vibes, right? Like I'll fuck with you. You know, I, I will say though, on, on that topic of like, you know, Asians are oh, fine. actually like, it's yeah. not my song. But um, it's me and one of my boys from Madison, actually, Crip Boy. Uh, we have a song with Stupid Young, so that's cool. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. Long Beach, right? Yeah, shouts to, shouts to Young. He's hard. When's that dropping? Um, I think we're supposed to shoot the video end of this month, so hopefully soon. How much has it changed? Because I will say, if you want to make it in music, you got to be in L.A. So you just said, coming out here, a lot of great things have happened for you. What are yeah. those things? Um, just collaboration, networking. Um, have some LA like industry people that I really respected helping me out, guiding me, you know, just pointing me in the right direction, songwriting, working with new production, even like my boy Zanse, I met him through Transparent Arts, who are the Far East mm-hmm. Movement guys and Avex Publishing. And this is my first time making a full, like pr- one producer album and it's going to come the, out. Is he the producer on the album? Yeah. Yeah. Come up. Want to come up here, bro? So this is Zanse? Zanse. Zanse. Sensei, but Zanse. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Zanse, real quick. Like, show off. Hey, pull that mic up to, to your face. And then also, just show off a little bit of your drip, right? Yeah. Pull up the bag with this the is, chain. This is some producer drip right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is that shit. Like, I make music for sure. And you know what's really cool about this? All right. I don't... Like, Fire. I know yeah. Asian culture, Korean culture bag. is very sensitive. Uh-huh. So, you know, Japan and Korea got that old beef. Are you Japanese? Japanese? He's Japanese. Uh, uh-huh. I, made, I got this from fucking Walmart. No, 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 not Walmart. <laughs> the yellow chain? Yeah, like you, you have to like take... <laughs> Hard. You have to take it off and like you have to cut the chain and like... 
like we buy the however the long. I have the oh, same. Oh, so the you same bought both cutters and shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like yeah, a Home yeah. Depot shit. I got the same one, and I tie it around Wu Tok's neck. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about that in public. Yeah, I'm sorry. But uh, and then but the you, necklace too. The necklace is. She's got like a what is? No, I've never yeah. seen anyone rock a Where's Waldo shirt harder than that. <laughs> so, so you you Eat vibe it. The dangly earring is cool too. The little skull. Yeah. You kind of uh, you kind of dress kind of like punk rock skater. What's yeah. Your yeah. What's your what's your influences? Rock. Music. What what bands do you like? Um, I like the Japanese rock bands a lot. Like who? Uh, I used to listen to Asian Kung Fu Generation. Uh-huh. Have you heard of them? No, they I know like a couple a, Japanese bands because I really like anime. First, like <laughs> opening song for Naruto. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then fucking Sum Forty One and like. Yup. But you know what it is like, like that. in 2018, I shot for a Japanese streetwear brand, uh-huh. and. I had some like Korean people hit me up like, hey, like that's a little sensitive. So, you know, really? yeah. and, and, and I was like, old, old people. And I was like, I get yeah. it. But honestly, wait, wait, bro, were they old people or were they young? A young? little older. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, bro, this drip hard. <laughs> Fuck it. <The> pictures up. <laughs> so we were joking, like not joking, but kind of seriously. We, I feel like we were rewriting history. Cause if you notice like on the Spotify and the YouTube, it's not Ted Park produced by Zan. It's Ted Park and Zanse. Mm. So I, I feel like I just want to merge the culture. And I feel like, Every different type of Asian person has something unique to offer. Mm-hmm. And it, like, even in the production in the song, it's so different. Mm-hmm. Like he's mixed. Cause he actually, it's funny. Like I was living in the hood in New York or living out the studio. He, he was living out the studio in Atlanta before he moved yeah. here. So we've mixed like these pretty Asian melodies with like Atlanta trap drums, you know? Mm-hmm. So just, I feel like we're like, we're like writing a new chapter of history. So like you guys meet through somebody else. And then like, what made you really be like, yeah, I'm going to spend a lot of time and write this next project with you guys. Like, what, what did you see in him? What were the qualities that stuck out to you? Um, I like hip-hop music, but, like, I like good hip-hop music. I mean, I like pop structure songs, you know, like, that like catchy shit. Mm. Like, give me, give me an example. Name some artists or songs. I don't know. Just, like, something that's on the radio, like, where, like, hook comes, virus comes, and the pre-hook, or, like, hook comes back, and, like, easy to remember. It's because, like, you Juice know, World. Yeah, yeah, shit like, like that. Like, you know, hip hop sometimes it's like one verse, one hook, where there's no hook, you just rapping. But, like, he's talking just like more like, you know, pop structure where it's like a little more polished and like yeah. put together. Yeah. Easy to understand, process in the head. Cause I listen to hip hop music and then I get, I kind of get like, I lose interest in like 30 seconds. Me too. So, kind of like, I want to make it catchy as fuck. But he's like, oh, he's like, he knows how to rap, but he knows how to like, Get around the pops, you know, structure. Your melodies so. are crazy. Fuck, thank you, man. They're Appreciate really, that. really good. And that's the first thing I know. I can never understand lyrics. Like, I can't memorize. Right. I can li- listen to a song a thousand times, but, like, when I listen to music, I'm like, oh, this is immediately. Yeah. No, like, for sure. It's a, it's a vibe. That's why I freestyle everything, because I feel like if a melody is going to be catchy enough for a listener, when attention span is already so short and everyone already got their own shit they're dealing with, they're living their own life, music is only a part of life for other people. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like, if it's catchy enough for me to freestyle off the top of my head without thinking and it's still hard, that shit going to go. So real quick, you guys walk in the studio, you have beats prepared, whatever. What's the, what's the work process like? And then he's literally just like next, next, next. And you're, and you're humming things or what's the work process like to I just, make the songs? First time we were linked up, we like, I played, well, maybe we made like seven, six songs or some shit in like five hours. I was like, damn, this is fast. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like two songs that just kind of like stuck out to me. And one of them was like a sound that we were kind of doing right now. Kind of more like yeah. uh, Asian, like, is that you and me or not? It's going to be on that project. But, okay. Yeah. Same project, but that kind of like video game sound kind of, you know? Mm. And then I was like, man, this shit hard. Like <laughs> then, you know. Do you sample video games a lot? Yeah, I do sometimes. Like which video games? I don't know. I just go on YouTube and just find like random, random video shit. Game sounds. And just, oh, this sounds cool. Let's put it in the intro or like... That's fire. What's your, that. um, like, like, how did you get into music? Were you like a typical Asian where you had to take piano lessons, things like that? Actually, I was, I went to music school for like two months, but I got to. <laughs> I thought you were about to say that. <laughs> two years. <laughs> like 20 I, years. <laughs> no, no, no. I quit because it was too expensive, but like, um, yeah, I, feel I play like the relatable. guitar and stuff. So basic knowledge of music theory, <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been playing, messing around with the guitar, like when I was 15, when I was listening to like some 41 and stuff. Who, who would you say is, uh, the, the biggest artist you've worked with? Uh, I guess Wale, 
Sabrina Claudio. Oh, I love oh, Sabrina wow. Claudio. Yeah, crazy. Annalie Choppa. If you see Sabrina Claudio, tell her I love her. For me. Okay. Just for me. Yeah, thank I know you. I will. But me too, though. Fuck. <laughs> Just send her like a, a, a signed letter of like 40 people. Be like, all these people love you. <laughs> so that we have to compete. But the thing is, I think this is the first time in my career. I'm really embracing being Asian and Korean, right? So with him, I think like for so long with my sound and my music, I was trying so hard to prove like... Cause I feel like K hip hop has a certain sound. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not like these guys. I was really in the mud. Boom, boom, boom. So I want to make New York sounding Atlanta sounding. But the reality is that as an Asian rapper, if I'm rapping on little TJ, little baby Migos type beats and I'm, and I sound kind of similar. What makes me different? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So working with this guy, it's like where we've infused like Asian sounding melodies whether it's video game stuff or whatever with these like hard drums and i feel like i finally for the first time in my career have something that is unique mm. you know are we allowed to maybe off this but i'd love to hear the new music oh yeah of Hell course yeah, yeah we should play it shit if, if, hey, if, if, if you want to preview something right yeah, now yeah, i mean y'all got a speaker all right we'll get that in the meantime yeah yeah, yeah but, but I'm, in the, I'm in the meantime i got a quick question that we could fill it with um shot first <laughs> Ooh, this is cool. I, I thought you were talking about like tequila shots. I was like, oh fuck, we're gonna die. Holy shit, that- no. We, by, by shot 10, so, we, there would be no interview. Hey, I'm gonna tell y'all something though. I never understood seltzers and bro, them shits creep up on you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm already feeling a little, you know. <laughs> I don't know. What we're it is, is you wanna, uh, we're only 17 you. minutes thirsty. But don't punish yourself with that big brand hard seltzer garbage. Bless your taste buds with Nectar Hard Seltzer, featuring superior Asian fruit flavors like lychee, yuzu, mandarin, and Asian pear. It only has 90 calories, one gram of carbs, and zero sugar. Wow, no weird aftertaste. Find Nectar in store or online at NectarHardSeltzer.com. Now back to whatever the hell they're talking about. After this, what your guy's schedule is, but um... Whether it's tonight or whenever, I would love. We would love to play you guys all the new music. Oh hell yeah! And yeah, get, let's let's get that speaker in here. If you guys want to do it on the show, every yeah. time. Oh yeah, let's do that. Because mm-hmm. every time, it's been so fun. Like even Justin, mm-hmm. we don't really send out the stuff we're working on. The only kid that hears everything is that kid right there, Richard Song, because he's doing the videos. Hey, you should pull up too, real quick, bro. This is my little bro. Um, I'm gonna tell you a story about this kid. I remember uh-huh. I told you I want to put all my people on. Uh huh. This I'll, kid, I'll fuck with that. this kid here, Richard. I met him on his birthday. Two years ago. Two years ago. I pulled up to Justin Park's house. Uh-huh. He's like, it was my little bro. This kid was like-, like actually his little brother? Or like, like, well, not blood, but you know. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then- you, That's exactly why I was <laughs> thinking that. I'm like, he looks like him. Like. But pretty much, every time I touched down in LA, the first time actually I pulled up, Justin's like, oh, he's doing video. I was like, I bet. I'm here for a couple days. Let's do a video. He was like, oh, I'm not ready. And I was like, fuck you mean. Because even when I wasn't ready, I was capping, yo, let's get it, man. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? Um, just super humble. And every time I pull up to LA, you'll see on my story, I'm here. Yo, link up, let's work. Let's work. Let's work. I'm like, oh shit, like he's hungry. Mm-hmm. So actually moving here, before I moved, I told him like, hey, let's really lock in. This kid is a soldier, man. This kid be with me pretty much every day. And, you know, he, he jumped off a flight from Houston, pulled up, and we shot you and me. I didn't Damn. even tell him I was in the video. I was like, hey, where you at? We're doing the video. He's like, what the fuck? I'm in Atlanta visiting. I'm like, oh, my bad. But um, yeah, this kid, like, really driven. I've seen him go from zero to 100 in a year. He's only been doing video for a year, and he produced that video. That's crazy. Two-day two shoot, run and gun. You're editing also, or you're filming? Yeah, he's I editing. Film and Whoa, so you do, the, you do the, the, all the VFX and yeah, things Yeah, all like the posts, yeah. You, so, you hey, do wait, VFX get him, get him within a year? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, Eddie. Yeah. Eddie, I yeah. want you to listen to that. Say that again to the, to the mic. So within a year, because like I basically just started cutting really basic music videos at the start, but towards like the end of last year, I really started dabbling in like After Effects and stuff. And that was like the first project I really like kind of blew, like went off with that shit. So like now it's like, okay. And like, yeah, I'm just, I'm I'm just, yeah. yeah. But, but, but real quick though. So for yourself, you know, the music, I I came from music. I used to do artist management, whatnot. Oh, sick. Music videos are a grind. Like what's the vision as a, like 
you know, what you want to be a creative director? Do you want to shoot movies one day? Like music videos is, can't be the, the end yeah, goal, right? Ultimately for me, I do want to end up shooting like feature length films and Shmoo- more long uh, <laughs> format content. But you I think for right now, on. it's a great, I mean, the music video lane is great for me because it's just a lot of fun for me. I love music and I love doing film and trying to mix those two things into one is like, the perfect thing because like back in the day too I wanted to be like a rapper like a producer whatever all that <laughs> back like, in the day you be rapping you be no 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 no, no, no. I'm I'm Justin you. this was like three years ago yeah, yeah. oh yeah it was like right <laughs> before I started doing all the video shit but like <laughs> I don't know. I did, for me, the music didn't resonate with me. And then eventually I landed on film and then I just took it and ran because how I got into it was basically my last quarter of college at UC Riverside. I took a film editing class and like this was right when I was graduating. I'm like, fuck, I like need to get a job. Like, what am I going to do? And I took that class. I'm like, yo, fuck it. I'm just going to go balls to the wall. I'm going to go do videos when I get back home. And luckily because of the people around me, like Justin and Ted and all these people, I was able to kind of get my footing first. And then after that, it's history. Now we're going to like level up this year. We're going to do a lot more crazier and bigger things. So it's a great start. I'm just happy that, you know, first time releasing a song, like, with a strong team behind it. Like, I'm happy that my little bro got to do that video. And this is his first official video. So, I ain't even no buzzer, but shout to that. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, where's your drink, bro? You drink? Hey, yeah. You go, you go, you go yeah, drink, drink straight you, out the can. Yeah, take the, just take I'll that take can. It to the yeah. I'll take it to the yeah. Cheers, y'all. Wait, you got nothing in there, brother. I know. Here, 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 here. Oh! He said I know. Sneaky. <laughs> That's like me in K-Town Club. I'd be like, oh, young. And then, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely got caught. You got caught? What do they do? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, are we shouting? That's funny. But yeah. Okay, wait, I had a question, a, a kind of a, an off that tangent question. Well, first of all, actually, congrats, by the way. 40,000 views in one day on your first music Ooh, video is wild. Wow. I know that. Hey, that's crazy. Wait, wait, that's your first music video? Yeah. Uh, that was my first. I've done music videos before, but that was my first one where it was pushed by a larger label like Live wow. Nation. So. Yeah, no, nah, well, I mean, we're watching that. Like, we could. I would never have known that it was some guy that was editing for like a year oh, doing that shit. It, so bro, good I appreciate shit, man. you, man. But uh, but yeah. So my question, oh shit, my That's question cool. for Ted was so mm. I'm, I'm we a, didn't, we actually didn't know. I'm not the type of dude that just sits at the watching the views because we're grinding. But damn, thanks for letting us know. Yeah, Got you. Definitely just check the. YouTube we'll be the app. tracker for y'all. I'm texting you yeah. every day like you're 65. Oh <laughs> <Hell> yeah, <laughs> let's get it. But, but nah, like I just like I'm super excited that you know, as we implement more structure into my career that I was very close minded about, even with higher, like Jay kind of just let me do me. And I appreciated that, but I feel like I was very humbled by that. Like, I wish I took in more of his guidance this time around. I'm going to really try and do things the right way. And I'm just so happy though, that even with some people supporting me that I get to do this shit with my friends. Mm. It's, it's fucking amazing. That's, that's one thing that I've noticed, like talking to your friends and also saying this now, it's like, you've done a really good job. I think you're very magnetic. Like a lot of people believe in you. So and, many. I, I, and they grind dude, for you. Dude, I don't so, do this shit by myself. Do so many people show love and do favors and allow me to put all my bread into the fucking getting this out to the world. But it's kind of like, I would say that maybe that's like a, a secret power of yours because you're not necessarily the loudest person in the room or whatnot. But for <laughs> Y'all some, don't know. I'm loud as hell. Really? <laughs> I, well, time out, time out. Every, every person we talked to was like, Ted was like quiet. And once I started talking to him, they were like, oh, you, like this guy's <laughs> legit. So oh, I don't know. Man. But at yeah. the end of the day, would you say that, well, what would you say is your strongest, like your strongest quality outside of being good at making music? That like, I, I really want to do this shit with people who I got a lot of love for. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, like music, what, this career, like if I'm not working with people who I really fuck with and who I know really fuck with me, I don't have fun doing it. So. All right, I got to bring this back to the question I was trying to ask before you cut me off. <laughs> hey, hey, have you guys Anyways, noticed this guy's a little hostile with me? It's because I don't get paid. I'm doing this shit for free. So. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's a, hey, he's a owner. What they're time they're, they're going to cut, cut that out the video, by the way. So I'm just gonna he's say an owner I'm in kidding, this I'm establishment. Yeah, I'm and joking. one day he will be able to buy his 10 baby mamas, 10 houses. Have, Damn, you the Asian have, future. I have no yeah, baby Asian mamas. Asian. There are no baby Asian mamas NBA out there. Sure? I, can, I can go on record saying that. We got NBA young boy right here. I fuck with that. But anyways, the question, we're talking about Jay Park just now. Uh, I'm a big Jay Park fan. Me so too. One, of the, one of the things that I, I was always like weirded about is like, why does, why do you think Jay gets canceled so often? Cause it makes no sense when I see him getting canceled. I'm like for that, 
I'm like, Asians seen, are dumb. Yeah, I'm okay, like, I've hey, seen so much worse. You know what it is? I think like, okay, the first thing I'll say is if Jay or me or anyone does anything that offends, especially a black person, I have no right to speak on that. But I'll say this. Every time Jay has gotten canceled, <clears throat> I want everyone to know that Jay got the biggest fucking heart. And he all he wants to do is put his people on. So, I mean, maybe misunderstandings, you know, no communication. You can't, a lot of the fans can't talk to the man. But I just want people to know they're like, real shit. Like, even though me and him did not see eye to eye all the time when I was with Hire, <clears throat> he a real one. And he helped change my life. So, I got nothing but love for that dude. I'll always stand behind him, you know. And also, I feel the same way. Like, even as, like, you know, an Asian guy that never thought that, well, I grew up Asian American, obviously. Yeah, for like, sure, for sure. For and grew sure. up in very, like, white areas. And I always thought, like, K pop was a little cheesy to me, but Jay Park was Bro. the first, was one of the first people where I was like, oh, this guy's kind of cool. Like, that I would rep dude, this. Yep. I introduced him to my friends, like, when I went on tour, all that. Bro, he he, he don't act like no famous ass dude. He cool as fuck. And him and Saho was really bonded. Saho, yo, son, you got to really talk your shit in your music. And Jay's like, oh, what? Bro, we are touring Dallas. This dude, Jay, comes up to me. Oh, what a, what a Ted. Hey, where's Saho at? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm your artist, man, you know? <laughs> but nah, nah. Like, you know, I feel like there's a lot of misunderstandings and communication. Hey, but and it, it's sensitive. Like, you know what I mean? Especially like. Like, there's a lot of black girls and black people that fuck with K-pop and, and K-music, and, and it's an honor that, that anyone would fuck with us. But every time that he does get canceled for something, per se, I just want people to know, like, he really a good dude with a big heart, you know? It that's, ain't, ain't non-malicious, you know? That's mm. what's up. And, and and the other piece to that, too, is, like, I think cancel culture is so stupid. It's so stupid. Like, man, you know what it is? Like, everyone getting canceled, but, like, shit, man, look at He getting paper, so shit. <laughs> Hey, but I need to know, is Jay Park a demon with the women on tour? <laughs> he, 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 this dude, this dude is very focused. This guy is very, he's a professional. This dude ru was running like six miles a day on tour every day. Really? I was like, bro, I, I went to Planet Fitness once last year. <laughs> I walked 0.4 miles. Oh man, I'm good. You know, like, but no, he's very professional. But I mean, like, what dude is not going to have fun? I'm not, I don't really know on tour yep. because he was really grinding. That dude be grinding. Mm. But I mean, like, it's Jay Park. Like, how's he not going to get ladies? Like, like, dude, like, I don't look anything like this dude. And I have way less favor than him, but beautiful girls like me. So what the fuck you think he got going on? You know what I mean? Like, that's all I'm saying. But not. Nah, Jay's the man. Real shit. Word, word. I'm glad to hear that because yeah. I fuck with Jay Park. Like he said, he was the first like cool Asian person. Him and Han from fucking Tokyo Drift <laughs> were, were the two examples I had of being cool as an Asian guy growing up. <laughs> why do you think so, he got long hair? Like my whole life. Why do you think I got? Why do you yeah. think we both got long hair? That was, that, Is that real hair? Yeah, that's his hair. That's his hair. That's fire, <laughs> bro. Y'all kind of got the same thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I grew up. Mine's a little Twin. nicer. I I I, I yeah. use a lot of dry shampoo. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's look, okay. Yeah, very nice. Oh, you speaking of the hair, I got to make a shout out real quick. Shout out to Suni Style. I don't know if y'all know about Suni, but I've heard of that place. The young, he be showing mad love, doing my hair all the time. Is he just like the the, the the it K Town like hair person? Hell like? yeah! But on top of that, he's a uh, Korean business owner that really supports Korean talent. So mm. that's my young. Shout out to Suni. Shout out to you, Suni. Hey, were you getting inspired by your hairstyles? Because you had so many different hairstyles. The split hair was his idea. <laughs> you, you watch My Hero Academia? You watch My Hero Academia? No. You don't? No. Well, if you're about to be finished with Naruto, you should start that. But there's a character called Todoroki. He got the split hair, the red, and he got white on one side. Suni, you heard that? I'm pulling up tomorrow. White, let's do it. <laughs> Wait, what, what, year was the, uh, what year was the Jay Park tour? 2019. 29 that was that's very recent so yeah. my question is kind of more revolved around like fan bases right so yeah. you had like fans leading up to it and now you've kind of like tapped into the asian community which is yeah. amazing right like yeah. and i would i'm experiencing the same thing building this drink company and how supportive the asian hey, community is hey speaking of that you gonna give me you gonna hook me up with a pack or what man all day Mul this multiple shit, packs all multiple honestly packs. bro like i definitely took 13, 14, I don't know, shots of Casa Azul last night with Juno Flow and Wu, and that's why I threw up outside some place. I don't even know where we went, but I'm I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm faded right now, so shit. Oh, the Casa Azul, oh, man. <laughs> Bro, I've seen that shit. That is, that is crazy. Oh, I've Whoa. never actually seen anybody. Good before. morning. You need a ring. <laughs> <laughs> and there needs to be space. This so is a little like, Casa Azul lesson for all you thoughts out there. His face sunk. 
He, he, he oh. literally said, he literally, in East Coast, he literally said, hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. Wait, wait, well, you I just want, wait, wait, I have to give a warning real quick. Zanse, your cup is very yeah, full. I would not like, recommend taking it all at once. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, wait. Maybe split it with Richard or something. My dogs. Oh, my dog. Yeah, Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. My guys. I heard the Japanese could drink. Cheers. So there, there you go. Uh, Bro, this yeah. guy drinks so much. To, hey, wait, 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 wait. What's the cheers to Asian excellence? To Asian excellence. Oh, to shit. Asian excellence. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Oh, it's damn. That was too realistic, bro. What I the, definitely the, thought you yacked it back up. And I was like, yo, that's If hard. I did that shit, that would... Fuck, if only I was that talented, yo, I would fucking... Bro, you should scared. literally go on America's Got Talent. Yo, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna win, golden buzzer. And it's just straight tequila again. Like there's nothing mixed with it. Oh my god! Like you got that that, that fucking esophagus control like that. Yo, I did the uh, I did the trick, the inhale and then take the shot and exhale. Uh huh. Kind of works. It does work because it, it's like the same thing as plugging your nose when you take a shot. I believe you, you but bro, that's too many steps, my boy. <laughs> the fuck going on? <laughs> Hell no. Hey, I also heard. that's classy as well. That shit tastes good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Hey, what's your drink of choice? <laughs> and honey. I knew no, he was no, gonna say honey. No, no, no way. Don't lie to me. Demon Don't time. Bow. Yeah, you nothing, know the f <laughs> nothing dark. Oh, I love dark. Oh, Is it cognac? Man. Okay, cognac. Yeah, but the regular, the regular demon. henny or VSOP? Like, what Bro, do you like? I'll drink regular henny. I'm not. I'm a simple man. Yeah, he's not bougie. He slept uh, in a. He's not bougie, train. he says, as he loves cognac. Bro. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not too glowed up. I don't like, even give a fuck. Martel, whatever. Honestly, even if it looked like Henny, it could it could not be. I mean, I don't give a fuck. Jameson, I'm Korean. I'll drink anything, man. Except for Captain Morgan. I drink Captain Morgan, and I yacked after one shot. Captain and Morgan's Jack disgusting. Oh, yes. No, 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 fuck Jack Daniels. Hey, 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 yo, 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 yo. Respectfully, Jack Honey is kind of these. All right, Jack <laughs> Honey is, but the regular Jack Daniels is like okay, fucking okay. sewage water. I probably shouldn't say this, but I definitely did a show, and they gave me my bottle after the show, and it was a bottle of Jack, and I was like, bro, I can't even drink this, but I drank it. Anyway. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Not, that's a good question. What's on your rider? I used to not have a rider till now. Let's go. But what is a rider? Got, what is a rider? A rider is when an artist comes to a show, they can send it ahead to the to the product or the venue and say uh, these are the things that I want in my. In I my want. Room. I uh, want. I want two you bottles. Could, of you can have shoddies on there. Like you could write that, and they'll just have it in your Maybe room. Maybe some. But uh, I'm, 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 hey, I'm, if you're if you're like fucking Ed Sheeran. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be like that. Look, look, yeah, well, look, 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 I'm not Ed Sheeran. I'm not even Ted Sheeran, man. <laughs> so I'm not demanding shit. But all I'm saying is, like, on my rider, you know, Skittles, Starburst, <laughs> Twizzlers, <laughs> mm, a bottle of Henny per two people I'm with. And, but most importantly, is just like, make sure everyone I bring is taken care of because I don't, I bring people who I really care about. Mm. You know, so just make sure everyone has a good time because if any of my homies get locked out the room where they can't be backstage, we out. You know what's funny? Uh, one of my, uh, one of the artists that I used to manage back in the day, they evolved as humans where they start drinking, they stopped drinking and stuff. So the rider was like, Boring. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey. the rider was really high end, expensive, like food. And they would just take it home. Like what? They would take like, like a like, big rib. Not like mm. a man. <laughs> I love McRibs. Don't ever talk hey, shit about McRibs. McRib slap. McRib slap. McRib go crazy. Dude, I'll eat like 7 Eleven. You know that song, Big like Drip by Fabio Foreign? I fuck with Fabio, but every time I hear Big Drip, instead of Big Drip, it's the same McRib. McRib. I fell in love with a McRib. Hey, hey. <laughs> he loving a sauce. Sauce. I don't know. Life's a song. Wait, wait, wait. What's a, what's a brand that you were like, yo, I would. Love the sponsorship by this person. Nectar, come fuck with me, bro. Fuck. We got you. That's Sold. done. That's done. Sold. So next. I've, Bung. Dude, next I, one. I'm drunk off a of seltzer, bro. Fuck. Oh, shit. I'm faded. How do you feel? Wait, Z Zansay, how do you feel about the, the seltzer? It's amazing, actually. It's fucking it good. This guy comes over. Oh, Tad, you have alcohol? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tad, this will be the alcohol in your house. We'll, we'll stack your house. Yeah, yeah, I just got a mini fridge. Shouts to Mike Gow, so please, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. that shit will be constantly Mike stocked. Mike, go up! Wait, no. wait, he just gave you a mini fridge out of nowhere? He's like, yo, do you, you want a mini fridge? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a good mm. impression. Right, honestly, this dude is why I moved to LA because last time I was here for my concert with Kate Night Market at Globe Theater, I was like, dude, I kind of want to move to LA. Like, you know, Transparent's showing some love. They want to work with me. Um, and he was like, bro, I have a whole house. It's only me in here. Like, I'll rent you a room for the low. And actually, he built a back house, which is perfectly soundproofed, and I made it my studio. That's wow. Fire. So the shout out to Mike Gua, Mike Glizzy. Hey, the one thing I said is I went on your TikTok. It's not 
popping, and I'm telling you, as a music artist, you got to be on TikTok. Well, What's up? I started using it like four or five days ago. Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, I feel like I'm about to start really throwing. You know what it is? I've always had this, like, very small-minded mentality. I'm an artist. I'm not a content creator. But I have a personality, so fuck it. I'm about to go hard. Yeah, yeah you can, can, I can see you doing well. Five days changed. ago, I had it. Before I started publicly pushing the TikTok, I had, like, a couple hundred followers. And I've already get, I'm already at 4K, so Whoa. I'm like, hey, you got to start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. But just know, like, how I'm acting. Like, I'm getting lit. I'm having a good time. I'm about to really start doing that on TikTok, so... I want to have a career besides music too. So I want to show more of my personality and like having fun. And mm -hmm. that, I, I really want to go crazy on there for real. And yeah. that's the only thing that sell, sells. Story sells. Like obviously, story. You, need, yeah. obviously <clears throat> you need to have good product, right? I mean, like, and bro, you can put this in the interview. I don't, like, this can go on air. As an artist, I've been very close-minded about a lot of things till this year. And moving to LA, I was like, I'm going to do a fresh start. I'm going to drop the ego. I'm going to go hard. And I was always, you know, I was always scared. Like, dude, look at my streaming. Look at my socials. I built a really good following. Look at my concerts. I don't want to start over on TikTok. I'm scared. I was a little scared. But it's not really starting over. Like, It's you not. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm already seeing my go fans off. go to it's TikTok. Gonna go yeah. Gonna go and bro, I've decided, like, I have too much personality and too much, too much to show <laughs> to, like, just be like a be a dickhead and not go crazy on, yeah, on a platform yourself. that's lit. Yeah. And also, like you know, it's funny because one of my big homies he came over the other day. He works there at, at TikTok. He was at Fader, then Translation, now wow, TikTok. Nice. And he was Got like someone in the building, which is very important because yeah. they ignore everybody. And he was like Ted. He's like, dude, I came to your show. I saw you pack a one thousand seater. The fact, and you're one of the funniest people I know. The fact that you're not on this app is ridiculous. Ridiculous. He's, he's like, it's are you too TV. cool for it? And I was like, dude, I made the app. Like, I finally, I started, let's do it. So I'm about to start putting TikToks up, like, at least once every two days to start. No, once every two days is good, but every day. You yeah, I know. Well, just to start, because yeah, yeah. I want to not just throw shit up at the wall. Because as an artist, I care too much. But me and my friends are going to brainstorm and at least come up with something creative. And then once we get the flow going... Two a day. Fuck out of hey, here, bro. Yeah, yeah, hey, and talk to us though, because we'll give you a framework and then you can add your Please, own. Please, thank you to so it. much. Yeah. Once there's, this there's a there's a complete framework to it. And I have the craziest video that I just found today, which was like even blew my Please. mind. I'll send it to you guys. Because as an artist, bro, like I need all the help I can get. Bro, at one point I was posting seven TikToks a day. Damn, seven how do you come videos. up with the uh, I have a niche, so like you know, I do like cocktails, alcohol, bartending, and like I make it humorous, obviously. But like he does a lot of cocktails. Anyways, you know funny? <laughs> before he interrupted me yet again, <laughs> when, I, you when I put TA in that email with you guys about uh -huh. this, they texted me like, oh, this is, we're excited about this. This is good for you. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And that's also why like. Because like it's TikTok, bro. No, but not only that, he's voted number one smartest oh bartender by the lying, New York bro. Times. That's a lie, by the dude, way. you get hella shy about this, but it's, it's like, not real. Dude. Oh, Do you bartend for real? Yeah. He came up with that. Off topic, I love when you roast other bartenders. Oh, yeah. Appreciate yeah, yeah, you. Appreciate yeah, yeah. you. Oh, no. You got to understand, like, like, don't get me wrong. I have a lot of places with, like, a good following hitting me up for content. Mm -hmm. Even with artists I make music with, I don't collaborate for clout. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm actually willing to tell my story, we don't care about the number. Mm -hmm. We care about how entertaining and if it fits me. Mm -hmm. and you guys are fun and... I, that's why we here. I you know what I'm saying? That. Let's get it. That. You're also yo, your boys with Matt from hey, Apollo uh, ID, bro. That's hey, like one of my best Matt. friend. Uh, yo, he a nice. Guy. That's because I need you to stop drinking. You're getting crazy, all right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got one job. Wait, wait. Does nobody need to go to the bathroom? Usually, you're I, the first one. I usually I do. I would go to the bathroom right now, but I didn't have to go bad enough. I Damn. gotta Is pee. Is that your way of saying? Okay, you, you know what's yeah, funny? I've go. been having to pee for like 30 minutes. But Alan King, shout out to Alan King, A Kings NY. He sent me like all the new drip, and like I just don't want to take these. Jeans off. So. Yo, first of all, Alan, why, why, why have I never got no jeans? What the oh, fuck, Alan? Hey, yo! That's crazy. I thought we were boys. Hey, let me see the jeans. They're fine. Hey, the cheeks looking nice. Nah. You know, we got the Egg Kings drip on. Wow. You know, so this is a guy on. in New York that he makes these style of jeans? Yeah, Alan King. He's uh, he's he's young, dude. He's younger than I am. Yeah, but he, like, Alan's like, dude. He's a killer entrepreneur. Me and Alan used to be broke designer. as fuck, like walking Bezos. around Chinatown every night for hours, just plotting, and he fucking did it. That's why. Oh, wow, yeah, he, he, you knew him back then. He is not broken the slightest now. Oh no, he up. <laughs> yeah, he's up. That's up. probably why he sent me five thousand dollars worth of clothes. But. He got like the Migos wow. wearing his shit. Like he, he has, he's like a celebrity uh, brand. I'll, I'll say something basically. about this dude. Alan, the type of dude that asked me the uncomfortable questions. 
every time I see him, yo, Ted, what are you doing with this this business? I'm like, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to appreciate people like that. Yeah. Because there's also people in your corner. Uh-huh. Oh, yo, you going crazy. They'll only that, tell you good. No, and that's cool because you need people to bring you up. No negative energy. But then... You have, but when you have someone that can really kind of friendly press you and really looks out for your best mm. interest, you got to really appreciate these kind of people. So that's my dog. I fuck with him for real. Word, word. I, I fuck with that. But he's acting like that's him. That's not you, motherfucker. <laughs> Y'all funny as hell. That's hurtful. Yo, this that's fuck, hurtful. This I just see Bo over there. Like, he kind of just like. <laughs> he, 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 he knows what he's talking. He knows, he knows what he's trying to say. Hey, point, what side, whose side do you want? Yo, yeah. get the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah, hey, you stop. Mad Just quick. Take it in, you know, a little bit. All right, well, you're first, not being P right now. You're, you're, you're oh rocking a P on God. your shirt. Yo, so he learned you're this really... new word, right? You know how Gunna dropped that <laughs> album? You know how Gunna dropped Parlay that album? Parlay passed it first. Shout out to my brother Pass, man. Parlay oh, P. let me say this right now. When I was mentioning artists, like, dude, I mentioned... I, I'm trying to now I fuck with so many Asian artists especially that I don't mention the people I work with every day mm. first off Parlay Pass fucking hardest most underrated Korean rapper is he, what, is he came out with P he came out with the word P all I'm P? saying is that pushing P and he's Parlay Pass so that's my brother Ooh. and I also fuck with Pac-Man Vix Bounce Back Meek a lot of artists so I, I love yeah. that you just are looking for these Asian artists to collab with that are, are just all it's gonna Compound and do something explosive for you. Because, I feel it. I feel bro, it. Bro, we we sh we sh we showed a love, and just like how Jay showed love to me, I was like, yo, when Jay found me, I had like 10k followers barely, and this dude had like two something three million. So for me, it's like if this dude can reach out and like you know like who am I, bro? <laughs> like be like, yo, you a little like, and you know, past is really my brother in this shit. I never thought I would make like a best friend in music. It's my dog. You know, mm. and I feel like everyone who I make a song with is really my homie. So, I bet we got two questions. One, <laughs> one, you know, I, you know, I heard a little, I heard a little, a little bit on the grapevine, right? Mm. And I want to know what a, what a any grapes. That's an inside joke. I'm sorry. What what a hard rapper like you is doing, taking Epsom salt baths. Oh, so relaxing for the body and soul. Okay, what are the what else are the benefits? Why you like him so much? You ever just lay in the tub like this, right? Uh huh. And you keep dumping the salt in, and you're just, I believe in, you guys take, take some time yourself and chill. Mm. And that's what I do in the bad. I play my new music. I vibe. Maybe FaceTime. You know, I don't know, you know, I'm chilling, you know. <laughs> hey, but what is oh, it? Wait, wait, wait. I'm literally oh, right wait. now thinking oh, of wait, fucking wait, wait, Ted in the fucking to, to, bath. To, to make this less sexy, you know, honestly, the person that put me on the Epsom salt bath is my mom. <laughs> <laughs> My hey, mom. That's a Korean mom thing to put you on. My to. mom is the cutest and most beautiful person. And we know you're a mama's boy. I am. Dude. As you should be. What the fuck? I miss my mom's. My mom, mom called me. Okay. My Why mom you said that like a slur. My no, mom. <laughs> let me let me say some shit. Some real shit. I, um, my mom always got mad at me about my music, not because of me doing music, because I'm rapping about like you know fucking bitches and trapping and shit. But my mom called me the other day and like Ted like. <laughs> I went through all your work. I love it. I'm so proud of you. And I cried, dude. Like, my mom, I'll do anything for my mom. And the one thing about music is, like, <laughs> I feel like even, like, when I'm talking my shit, because the hard thing, my mom called me, like, I'm so sorry about all the hard things you've been through, and I wish I could have did more for you. My uh -huh. dad, too. And I'm like, Mom, you did everything for me. Yeah, that would make me cry. Uh, that hurts. Yep, yep. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, On man. a less serious note, my mom, I, I got sick one day. I was called, Ted. Here's some Epsom salt. Take a bath. Does it actually help, like in the sickness? It relaxes your your muscles. <laughs> Maybe I made that up, but I think so. <laughs> That's felt, a nice as fuck. It feels you felt amazing. less sick. You felt less sick afterwards. I sat in that tub for half an hour. <laughs> I should have put some Drake on. It would have been lit. <laughs> oh, <I'm so> <laughs> With like some candles on and shit, right hey, in the bath. Some candles, champagne. No, 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 no. We got electricity. We good. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, what? funny story. Oh, great. I was in Flatbush at this dude's house. The electricity went out because he didn't pay it. And then he dead ass had a lantern. <laughs> and I was like, bro, this is some like American Revolution type vibes. You know what I'm saying? Paul revealed the British are coming. Except for, yo, Ted's pulling up. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I was like, hey, yo, we got to wait for the sun to come up, man. It's a little dark in here, you know? <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> we Crazy shit. But that just makes me even more thankful for the little things. Like, sometimes I'll be like, Fuck, I just invested in 
this marketing, I invested in this production, whatever. Fuck, I'm down bad, but I realized, dude, from from where I was, I'm fucking up. So let's go. Uh, very yes, grateful. Sir. Let's go. Very grateful. All right, let's get to this game. All right, so it's like a this or that. Would you rather? Right. All right. First one. What do you prefer? Sleeves that are all connected or sticker tattoos like spaced out? Bruh, I have no tattoos, bro. Yeah, I was just about to ask. Do you? Do you have tattoos? What Obviously, do you prefer no. aesthetically? Yeah. Only thing I got tatted is emotionally scarred, bro. <laughs> was she? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was she Tell Asian? Us. Was she Asian? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I always say. It be your own people. Oh. It be your own. That's why I don't <laughs> fuck with Korean girls no more, bro. Oh, 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 What's your, what's your Be, type? Feel free to change my mind, though. You know? <laughs> what's your type? Just just a, a, a sweetheart who could throw it back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> a sweetheart. So you, like, so you like him sweet and you like him big bootied. What else? A little thick, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, just, just a, a girl who's honest and can be realistic and hold it down. Damn, I'm asking for a lot. <laughs> Is that a lot? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think so. It's because crazy that that's a lot, though. You know what I'll admit, though? I admit, though? Okay, people be talking shit about like OnlyFans and shit like that. I'm happy that ladies can finally get their paper, you know, for looking good and shit. Because at the end of the day, like, I feel like dudes have, we put so many restrictions on women for so long. If, if you a dude and you famous or you popping and you fuck girls, like, oh, you lit. If you a girl and you look good and you fuck a couple dudes, it's like, oh, you a, mm, you know what I'm saying? So, I respect that. But for me, I, I guess with women, it's like, bro, I just want a girl that can understand me and understand the sacrifices I go through with my own personal life for my career. And if she can understand and respect that and can throw it back and go crazy, then we good. All right. Kanye or Drake? Come on, man. <laughs> Graduation is my favorite album ever. But ladies... I'm a certified lover boy. I'm the Korean CLB, so I don't know. It's hard. What? You got to pick one. Well, yeah, you got to pick that one. that threw me off. I thought you were about to say Kanye. You know what it is? I'll say Kanye because, no. Okay, I'll say Kanye because if I, if I loved a girl and she had my kid, I would probably get a house next door to her. <laughs> and, and like, ladies, I'll never put hot sauce in my rubber so. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he just exposed himself. All right, next one. Lil Uzi or Playboy Cardi? Uzi, come on. Play, 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 Playboy, Playboy is like iconic and he's dope, but Uzi, bro, one time meeting him showed hella love. Mm, Come on. Facts. Crazy. Ice JJ Fish or 3 Pac? It's, oh, y'all know about 3 Pac? Rest in peace. He died playing water polo at his school. Y'all know that, right? I did not, I did not know that. Water, I was a water polo player. I don't give a hoot. <laughs> how, do, how do you die playing water polo? Bro, drown, I don't fucking know. Drown. Bro, y'all didn't water, know water, you about three fucking pop, idiot. Huh? Y'all no, didn't know no. I knew about that. Why do you think we asked that question? Horses. We knew you knew about hey, three pods. You're literally on. riding horses in water. Like, how? there's a million ways to die. I feel like, <laughs> yo, yeah, three pods. You know that song? Okay, I'm going to say three pods because you know that song? I love me chicken. I love me chicken. I love me chicken. I love me chicken. Me chickens love me. I love me chicken. So, three pods. <laughs> I can't believe y'all know about him. That's crazy. Rest Mc, in power, kid. Mc, McChickens or McRibs? <sighs> I fell in love with a McRib. Hey, hey. McRib and McDonald's, y'all fake as fuck for making that limited time. Last year, I had 18 McRibs in the month it was there. Damn. Oh, damn. Busted. I fuck busted. with Golden Arches, but y'all foul for that. All right, next one. See? Supreme versus I May Leon Dior. <laughs> do, you, do, you know the, do you know the second brand? No, nobody knows that second brand. Bro, I'm not that famous, bro. Fuck. Look at his face. Everybody nobody knows. knows that brand. Well, he didn't know. I didn't know. I got well, Dior runners, know. but uh, the, the, the Dior. I don't know what the fuck you talking all right, about. All right, well, yeah. all right. Supreme versus Kith. <sighs> I feel like I used to really love Supreme, but I feel like Supreme has become more of like a younger kid's brand, mm -hmm. which is dope, but I'm not a young ass kid no more. So, and Kith has a... Uh, Wide selection of clothes. And they got ice cream. I love ice cream. Kid ice cream, I'm fucking... Kid has ice cream? Yeah. No, no ice cream, sorry. What, what cereal. A cereal ice cream. It's hard. Dang. It's fire. But anyway, cereal's Next my one. favorite dessert. Kimchi or kaktugi? <sighs> kaktugi is more consistent. How many Korean restaurants uh, have you been to where the kimchi is either too, too seafood or too bland? And mm. you know what's the fun thing to say? Shouty got that kaktugi. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if you know, you know, respectfully. All right, I, have, I have to disagree, but I yeah. respect your opinion. I have to disagree. Really good kimchi and some jajangmyeon kopegi. Amazing. Oh, Maybe we should God. hit that stop afterwards. Yeah, stop talking to me about this. I'm so hungry. Where's the jajangmyeon <laughs> plug in LA? I can't like find that. a good jajangmyeon plug. I got you. I'll put you all on Koreatown Plaza. Shout out to Sam Bizzles. What's the name, name of the place? Name the name place? It's in Koreatown Plaza. It's called Pao Jiao. Damn, I gave my spot. My big bro Sam Bizzles put me on. My, my one knock on Jajang in LA was the only flavorful ones are really seafood based. Where it's too bland, I finally found the spot. Mm. Hey, but, hey, but, but shout That's him out so because that helps the business, baby. Hey, Pao Jiao, I've only been one time, but I've had, bro, in 2018, I had Jajang a hundred something times. What? Pao Jiao. I'll follow with y'all. Y'all got it, man. I'm President go, Ted Park is for the people tomorrow. We're going tomorrow. And I will tonight. never ask for a discount because okay, I support local business. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go. Ted Park right, is for one, the next people. Yeah, I'm asking for a fucking discount. Next I'm one. I'm fucking this shit. We can ask him. Next one. They next don't one. have a rewards program. Like you get like eat eight times, get the ninth one free. <laughs> Definitely not. Sundubu or kimchi jjigae? Sundubu. That was easy. I like that. I like that. Ooh, yeah. yeah, you know, you know. Yeah. Just it's Korea. kind of mixed. Kimchi jjigae is in Sundubu, basically. You understand. No, I you, went can to, get, you can get I kimchi. I went to Korea with- and had kimchi jjigae there. I was scarred. It was too spicy. Really? And, you know, I go to BZD Tova House. Let me get a Sundubu with a dali. You know what I'm saying? We good. All right. This hey, is- wait, wait, time out. Would you say, sorry, before we move on to the next game, I would say that Korean food in Koreatown is equal, if not better, than Korea. I'll say this. Korean LA is amazing. Food's insane. great. Insane. It's insane. We have. Well, 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 so what's the place we'll be going from? to? Sonongda. Yeah. Bobby time. <laughs> I fuck with that place so crazy. They don't got that shit where I'm from. Well, when I was young and only ate fried food, I didn't appreciate Korean soups. The galbi tang there is incredible. Oh, really? Now I they, never even had that. And shouts to them for opening a second location. Thing. Second location? Shouts to Hall Dory, 24 hours. I'll fuck with y'all. They got multiple locations. I went to one in like and, uh, low key with my fire. uncle towards Corona. But anyways, let me let me hit y'all with this new game. New, <laughs> yeah, new went, game. New yeah. game. <laughs> new game. New game. I don't know why he's laughing. That was not something to laugh at. I don't no, know why he's laughing. <laughs> All right, new game yeah. is called Overrated, Underrated, oh, right? Okay, let's I'm going to hit you with a phrase, <laughs> and you are going to call it Overrated, Underrated, or Properly Rated, okay? No, no, you only get one or two. No, you no, no, it's Properly Rated is a choice. Fuck okay, it, one more two, let's go. Ass Anyways. <laughs> BTS. I feel like they're the biggest boy group in the world. I feel like Properly Rated. Mm. Shouts to them. And shouts mm. to BTS for shouting out my motherfucking brother, uh, Justin Park, Jungle, you a real one. That shit went crazy. Justin's been working for years. He fucking deserves that shit. Yeah, I'm hella proud okay. of my boy. Next uh, one. Drink. He beeped, he beeped, he beeped. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> I've, man. I've been, bro, how am I more... I think I'm more fucked up than last night. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are we going to the club again? Yeah, we're going out. We, we going yeah, out yeah, tonight. Oh, by the way, I'm going to General Lee's with some friends if y'all want to come. What's that? you never oh, been to General Lee's? No. It's in Chinatown. Going tonight? Yeah, yeah, Can we come? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, why, that's why I said it. I wasn't asking. I'm inviting myself. <laughs> no, we are, we are. Oh, bro, you're here? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, next one, next one. Let's go. All right. Fame. Overrated. Mm. Piping fans. Overrated. Mm. Hey, why? Because, like, I used to think that shit was lit. But I actually talk to my fans. Like, for they be sending me deep shit. And I'm like, I can relate to that. So I'm in a place right now. Like, if you if you a fan of my music, you my homie. And, you know, it's pretty cool like that. Um, what if they're not a fan it, of your music, but they're a fan of you? They're like, like they're trying to I pipe. Wanna, I, I like to meet girls that don't know who I am. Mm. And I don't tell them I make music, none of that. But, mm. but, but who, like, so not necessarily, but I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Tell me the tell me the devil's advocate. Let me hear this. No, no, I'm just saying, like, so so there's there's one thing of manipulating somebody, taking advantage, and the other is like if you if you genuinely like someone like respects your craft, whatever. I understand a fan, like a super fan, that gets weird. But like, what if someone's like, I mean, Yo, it's I not even weird shit. because the, to even have super fans, that's a blessing. Mm-hmm. But I, I'll say this, right? I think I, I'll admit this. I've never said this before. I get a little self conscious. Because even when I meet people, I'm like, dude, I remember how I was treated before I started popping mm. and had a name from when I was p- p- poor as fuck, right? <clears throat> and the people that really loved me, they had my back. But I'm like, fuck, man. Like, you've already fucked with me. Dude, Are you? can you even get to really know the- mm. some real shit? So that, that's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. I, like I fuck that with one. that. I fuck with that. I like that. that one. All right, next one. BBLs. 
Brazilian butt lift. I know a girl that got a BBL. She look good as fuck. Fuck it. <laughs> Ladies, do whatever make you happy. I so, support. So overrated or underrated? I think it's, what's the third one? Properly rated. Properly rated. Okay, nice. Because real shit, if that shit in front of me, that shit real. <laughs> <laughs> Brazilian, Brazilian butt lift. lift, bro. That shit. It's fuck. fake. It's I'm, like a tit job. It's like a boob job, but for your butt. I've never seen. I've never. I can't tell. Okay, okay. Let me make a tits. real analogy. I can, wait, wait, hold up. I could spot. Uh, I could spot fake tits. I can't spot fake okay. ass. You've never seen. I, I can't spot it. Okay, let me say some Hard. real shit. BBL. Like it's like they took it from their body, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, rappers with auto tune. Right? Mm. Me too. Me too. I sound way better with auto tune. Fuck it. It's real. Ooh. It is what it is. No, no, it's fat. They take fat from your like stomach and they'll put it in your cheeks. People die from that procedure. That's what though. I'm it's saying. a deadly as an procedure. Artist, deadly. Bro, you can I die. sound good as fuck live, and that's why people come to my shows. But I sound incredible with an incredible I'm engineer. To see you what are you gonna say next week? Bro, bro, yeah, bro. Be there. But I have an incredible engineer, Dakota G, who actually Track did all the recording for This Is America, Gambino. Oh, but he shit. makes me sound way better than I sound. So it's like, I can't, nah. I, I, I can't talk shit about a girl who got a BBL, right? And that shit look good as fuck when I'm hitting that shit. And like, bro, I sound way better with a good engineer tracking my vocals. Same shit, bro. The, the, the only thing I'll say, I think that there's like this misconception of like how people feel their physical appearance looks like some girls. Okay, look, I'm going to say this, ladies, 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 shit. ladies, real shit. This is, this is why I say that I do want a relationship because when you find someone, you wake up, you're looking crazy, your hair, whatever, and they still fuck with you and they still want to be with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, it's like, Hey, like, that's like the best feeling in the world. When you feel like, when I feel like I don't have to wear the chains, I feel like I don't have to bust down the diamonds. I feel like I don't have to wear all this drip and act a certain type of way and someone still fucks with me. That's the best feeling in the world other than making a hit, you know? So that's the same with I me. I feel like Wutak, ladies, if you want hanging. a BBL, go crazy because that shit looks, it's, it's straight. You don't need but the BBL. I, I feel Wutak. like girls should feel like just be who you are because at the end of the day, some dude is going to really think you're beautiful and really fuck with you and that's the person you're going to want to be with. Damn, I should have a show. I'm that's always what with you. Hey, bro, 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 I'm going to keep it 100 though. I be hating on turtlenecks. You're doing your thing, bro. You be Respect. hating on turtlenecks? Yeah, that should be crazy to me because, <laughs> bro, the fact that you got to scratch your neck and pull it down. <laughs> and we in LA. It's hot as fuck out here, bro. It's cold. I got, I got a cold. turtleneck cold. in the it's car. Cold. Is yeah, it cold? Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> Y'all are blessed because it's hot as hell would, out here, bro. I would never be able to live in New York. It's bro, just I bought cool. a Montclair because I was like, I feel like I'm not a New Yorker anymore. And dude, that's that, too hot. It's retired. <laughs> that's like that's, that's literally you're wearing like a personal sauna. Yo, yo, yo. But what y'all know about a Montclair Maniac? I'm crazy. A I don't Montclair even... what? Montclair Maniac. Maniac? Double M. Yeah. Oh, you I know what I, the fuck going you know on. What I, you know what the fuck going on. I got no idea what was going on. I never bought Montclair in my life. <gasps> Next one. Fake. BBWs. <laughs> Respect. I fuck with Lizzo. She's hot. Underrated? Bro, they got to put some more respect on the BBWs, man. So overrated or underrated? Underrated. All right, all right next all right. one. Arena Nightclub. Shouts to Terracotta for giving me the right price to perform. I fuck with them. They all show a good time. I, I can't say nothing about Arena. Because, like, you gotta understand, my, my experience is biased. The first time I went, I was with Aquafina, okay? So, Ooh. walked me right in. I went again with my boys after my concert with Claytown Night Market. They made me wait outside for like 20 minutes. And they told us, I'm with 10 of my dudes, right? Bust down chains, or whatever. Hey, guys, you know that you're gonna have to buy more than two bottles, right? I'm like, come on, bro. What the <laughs> fuck are you trying to say? But I have homegirls. Actually, the girl from my video, Ashley, she used to promote it, Arena. So, like, I can't speak no dirt. I've never met the owners, but I never had a good time there. Overrated or underrated? So, overrated. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yep. Let's go. Next one. Side chicks. <laughs> I feel like you got to keep it trans. You got to keep it transparent. You know what I mean? Mm hmm I feel like. Overrated or I underrated, though? Overrated. Mm. Because most side chicks don't want to be a side chick. Exactly. Okay. Justin Park. Underrated. Mm. And granted, he got the BTS cosign. So finally, and I told him this real shit to all my friends, right? Some people, even for me, like when Uzi or Jay Park cosign, whatever, like they'll be like, oh, like that's crazy. That's lucky, whatever. Justin, dude, you've been working for years. I'm happy you finally got a break. Bet. Underrated. Love that. Lean. 
<laughs> Am I supposed to say? <laughs> okay, I think we make we make choices as grown adults. Mm-hmm. If you know how to handle your shit, yeah, that's just straight. Overrated or underrated? Underrated for the right person. <laughs> hey Ted, look into that camera and plug whatever plug you need your to. Shit, hey yo, respectfully. My name Ted Park. I make music. I'm a cool ass dude. Come fuck with me. I love McRibs. I love Jia Jungmyeon. If you know, you know. I got my fan with me. Shouts to Bar Chemistry for really letting me just be myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we outside. I fuck with y'all. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and, just, and talk about you got an album music coming out. Oh, right? yeah. My new single, You and Me, is out now. Yeah, no PR shit. This is me. You know what I'm saying? We're dropping a lot of hits this year. We're doing a lot of events. I want to meet all y'all. If you fuck with me, come holla at me. And you can always give me some Gop Doogie. Peace. Let's go. <laughs> bro, you been Gop Doogie mad times, bro. Right, Stop having It's your boy TP, a.k.a. Ted Park, and I'm definitely under the fucking influence. We outside. Yeah. <laughs>